this week's edition of the Paint Box. Um, I'm here at 100 Kellogg Lane with Emily Barn Barnes. Barnes. Yeah. Barnes. Uh, one of the event coordinators here at 100 Kellogg's. And this is like I just walked through a little bit. This is kind of amazing. Yeah. Um, but we're here to talk about the art comp, the art competition that's happening. But before we talk about that, 100 Kellogg Lane. Mm -hmm. Um, what is it? What explain? You know, let's say someone's new to London or hasn't yeah, heard about it. Course. Yeah. Yeah. So we are an up and coming event hub, basically for Southwest Ontario, um, in the old Kellogg's factory. So we kind of have transformed it into this great spot, great tourist destination, with various businesses on the property that kind of have something for everyone to do. So you can make a day out of it, make a weekend out of it. Um, and there's just always things being added. There's always things going on. Yeah. I mean, I, I know my kids would love to come to the, you know, the factory, obviously, in yeah. terms of the play, but a, a couple of the art, in particular the visual art events that have happened over the past, it's the immersive experiences that have just yes. been amazing. Yeah, so uh, we uh, were lucky enough to host the Imagine Van Gogh experience, yep. which was incredible. In incredible, yeah. Yeah, it was really good. Um, and then Art Comp, yeah, we have... Our, Which is why we're here. Yeah, our why comp. we're here. Um, so Art Comp is our annual art competition. We started it in 2022, so last year. Yep. It's an annual competition, and in the new year, we open up submissions around the world, so yep. anyone from anywhere can submit. Yep. Um, artists can submit up to three pieces, and then we have a panel that narrows it down to 100 pieces. Yep. And those 100 pieces are kind of placed strategically throughout the building um, for the whole summer, so 100 days. Yep. And during that time, we have a panel of judges that will vote on them as well as the public can vote. Yep. And then when the competition wraps up in the fall, uh, we give away $200,000 in prizes. I, I think that's amazing, so we're gonna go back to that. Yeah. So we're actually filming this while the competition is on. Um, it's end of August. Well, this is going to be aired after um, the winner is announced. Yeah. So we're going to actually add the winners um, so that we're aware of them as well uh, by the time this gets aired. And um, if I can come to the event, I, on, I think it's September 8th? September 7th. Se September 7th, yes. I will. Uh, yes. If not, we'll at least grab those from the website. Yeah. But let's go back to the beginning. This is the second year you've done it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, like, why? Why, why do this? Why have an art competition? Because it's kind of, the size of it is new for London. This is something that's, that's yeah. different. Yeah, well, all of us here at 100 Kellogg Lane, we love art and we are super passionate about it. And we wanted to give artists a platform to be able to show off their work. And we think that our building is incredible for that. Um, we wanted to make art accessible to everyone. So some people that might not necessarily go to an art gallery, um, but is coming here for yep. maybe Starbucks or, yep. you know, to get their hair cut. And then they just stumble upon an art gallery kind of. We think it's super special to be able to incorporate art into everyday life yep. and just, you know, make it accessible for everyone and, and make it fun. So we're going to go around and do a little bit of a tour, which is great. Yeah. But this isn't just for London artists. It's no. actually people global, global, international, everyone, anyone. Yeah. There's no, you know, age restriction. There's you can be anywhere. We actually have some pieces this year from South Africa, wow. um, some okay. from California. Um, so we've noticed that after last year being the first year, it definitely, you know, had more of a reach the second year and more people are finding out about it. And yeah. we saw some submissions come in from um, different areas. So. Yeah. so, and there will be some local artists here as well, which yeah. is great. It's going to be great to sort yeah. of see and showcase a bit. But um, you had a panel of judges. I presume they know art, uh, visual art. They so do. You, you've so got... not necessarily just visual okay. art. Yeah. Um, we really make an effort to have the panel be consist of individuals who come from different art backgrounds. Okay. Um, so whether it's visual art, um, photography, or we have um, someone who is, you know, an interior designer or right. someone okay. who, you know, is an artist with like making jewelry or because yep. um, art comes in in all different forms, right? So For sure. uh, we want to make sure that we have someone from as many different categories of art um yeah just so you know it, it well so it's that that everything's kind of covered but it's also yeah. the people on the panel still understand and still have the basic principles of what's good yeah and, what and it's nice yeah, then because so. everyone has a different yeah. comes into it with a different view yeah so you you kind of get you know more of a like a diverse um 
opinion and, and fair judgment just because it's not all people that are you know visual artists yeah. like you get someone coming from everywhere so i think what's good about that is particularly as a member of the public coming um we will look at things and obviously to be stretched is really important um, we're not meant to like everything no but we're meant to actually respond and appreciate it and this yeah. is what's probably good about the panelists. i don't think yeah i don't think with art i don't think you have to like it i think if it makes you feel anything, yeah, it's doing its job, right? Yeah. Like if it makes you uncomfortable, if it makes you, you know, a little bit scared, if it makes you, you know, feel emotional, I think that's the point. And it's so subjective to everybody. Yep. And everyone will look at the same piece a little bit differently and take something different away from that. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's what's really, um, really cool about. So the other big thing about this is um, the amount Yes, uh, you know, which is which is huge. Obviously, there are a lot of artists put their pieces or submit their pieces um, into juried exhibitions that obviously that get judged. Sometimes they get in, sometimes they don't. A lot of those shows might have best categories and they might win a prize. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's art supplies. Sometimes it's actually you know one or two thousand dollars if it's sponsorship. Yeah, but man, we're talking two hundred thousand dollars altogether. Um, the panelists will. Yeah, so choose one piece to one artist to receive a hundred thousand. Yeah, and then the public um, has picked three pieces one, two, three. So let's yeah. go to the first piece that is uh, picked by the panelists a hundred thousand dollars. Why so much? We just, you know, we're like, hey, let's put an, a substantial yeah. amount behind this. We want people to know that we're serious about supporting the art community and, yeah. and you know, people that are the artists and they have dreams and they have this passion that um, sometimes isn't supported the most. So we wanted to, you know, be like, hey, we're serious about this and we really want to support you and, and help you do what you love to do. Yeah. Um, so last year, our panel's choice and people's choice each got 100,000. Uh, um, okay. This year, we switched it up. We wanted to kind of spread the love a little bit more. So our panel's choice still gets 100,000. Um, and that is the winner that the judges decide. Correct. Um, and the judges score the pieces they have scoring criteria yep so it's not just like a yes no it's they're based on five different criteria okay um and then for the public we have split it up into a first second third so the first will get fifty thousand, second will get thirty thousand, and third will get twenty thousand. so which is which like, is still a substantial oh, it's totally amount of money. amazing um, yeah. but we just wanted to spread the love a little bit more yeah. and yeah, we just... So you have 100 pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, you had 900 entries. You yeah. went through, you selected 100. Um, so the public right now is voting yes. on the pieces. Yes. And when they air this, the, the public will have voted, which is great. So, but for, as this is going to become an annual event, um, the public goes online and makes votes, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, that, the, so that'll be obviously something for next year. But the public votes on it. And then how, it doesn't matter how many are... It's just basic count for the for the People's Choice Awards, correct? Yeah, for People's Choice, uh, we we use a voting platform called Award Force. Yep. So the QR code is in the program, um, as well as some artists will have it in their Instagram bios, or they'll yep. share it with their friends and family. Just because some people, like I said, that have submitted from South Africa might not be able to make it here yep. to get the program and to vote through that. So it's one vote per account yep. on Award Force, and they can get their friends, family, the public come through and vote. Yep. Um, it's super fun. It makes it more interactive. It, it, it's really cool. Yeah. And what's what's interesting about it, obviously those kind of competitions, and particularly when it's international, it really is about getting not just the word out, but the the visuals out so it doesn't matter if somebody in south africa has seen it because this is now an international competition you don't have to come here you just have to see it online and appreciate we, it we we do encourage people to come here yeah. just because Sorry, it is. I, I will edit that part out we do want people to come here that's correct yeah <laughs> no it's okay we i can start um, yeah we we really encourage okay. people to come and check out the exhibition it's just incredible and some of the pieces well, all the pieces are so different when you see them in person. Yep. You can view them online when you go to vote. You can view all the pieces. Yep. However, if you can make it here, 
we want you out here just to <laughs> just to see um, the pieces and they're more impactful like right behind you we yeah. have like eight foot tall pizza sculptures you know yeah so some of the pieces are just you need to see them in person and we'll get to that when we do the walkthrough they're yeah incredible. for sure so so um, the other part would be part of the blooper reel by the way um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but still let's say for someone who has from South Africa it is an international competition yeah if people can come that's great but if they can't because travel is an issue you can sure. still become part of it yeah obviously 100 um but i but but definitely art takes on a different and even two-dimensional art uh looks different when you see it up close um you yeah see it's, colors, it's you really see interesting impact. because we see all the submissions come in and that's it's on an online platform and our panel will go through them and yeah. and, and narrow it down to the 100 but when you see the, the picture of it online and then when the piece actually gets delivered or gets shipped here and you unwrap it and see it it's crazy just so like beautiful how beautiful amazing it really it is. is and you know the size makes such a difference and yep. it's just so much more impactful when when it actually arrives on the property you're like wow that's yeah. so different yeah. what, what's um most of, a lot of people who have traveled obviously have made it to paris and to the louvre and you know the first place they go visit is leonardo da vinci's mona lisa of course. um but most of the photos we take are all the people around it but the painting itself even though it's so famous is actually very small mm -hmm. so it it the ability to see it in terms of in its setting is important for all of us. So um, again, though we're airing this at a different time, come on down next time the art comp is on actually. 100 yeah. days is, is pretty amazing. So let's um, let's walk around if that's okay. And yeah. just have a, um, have a look it's, at see. So. It's really crazy the energy that all of the pieces bring to the building. And we noticed last year that when the competition finished and we took all the pieces down, we were kind of like, oh, like this is sad <laughs> we want the art again and then when uh the spring came and we started putting up the pieces for this year it just is like the energy just comes flooding back and it, and it brings such a, a different energy like than yeah. we already have here with yeah. you know the factory the clubhouse there's always people coming in and out we have our concerts our markets but this is just something so different and it's, yeah. it's really special to be able to have all the art up and have it inspire you and just being able to you know take a little break and walk through and just experience all the different emotions that all the pieces of invoke. So yeah, it's really no, it is, it is amazing. And from, as a Londoner, um, this kind of, this kind of venue, it's a, it's a long-term pop-up gallery. Essentially. Actually, yes. pretty much. Yeah. Is it not? I mean, those kind of, this is how artists over the centuries have kind of done the things mm -hmm. there. There are established galleries that, um, the public galleries, which of course is very difficult to get into. There yeah. are established galleries where private galleries where people go to purchase, but the ability to have art in public places is incredibly important. Where, yeah. yeah. So and that's so what we're about for the artists, you know, being able to have that, this exposure, uh, as well as for the public who, you know, we get kids coming through that have never seen art like this and it inspires something in them. and and they take yeah, that home with them and yeah it's super super yeah. cool we wanted to make it as accessible as possible for yeah. people and just kind of have it in your face yeah. like i do love um just as i arrived yeah uh, i do love the banners yeah and, and the quotes that you that you picked obviously in terms of things like picasso i mean you talk yeah. about kids i mean all of us as kids are artists the problem is me remaining artists as we grow up that we yeah. actually lose those the creativity and the, well we get blocked towards creativity yeah. we think we can't do anything yeah um so the ability to play and have fun and again whether someone likes it or not it doesn't matter you just your 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 voice is coming out and you're learning and growing yeah so that's and it's super yeah. cool because we see families come here and come through and and their kids will have a favorite piece and it's really special like it's yeah. just yeah there's something for everyone and everyone yeah. comes here and they have their favorite and all the staff here you know have their favorite or they oh. spend the whole summer just kind of like looking around at all the pieces and then at the end they're like okay this one's my favorite yeah. so it's really special and yeah. we love being able to do this both for the guests and for the artists themselves we just love being able to support uh the community no that's great yeah. so let's walk around a bit yeah, and, then we'll, and then we'll actually come back here yeah. and and talk about um we'll talk about next year i know things always change yeah. but we talk about sure. yeah. emily we're going to walk around a little bit now um, and have a look at some of the art and do a bit of a b-roll and in fact 
I know the person who did this piece. <laughs> Jamie Jardine, local local artist. But uh, we're gonna em Emily's gonna take us through um, kind of how how it works. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So this is the program for this year. Okay. So we do one every year. This is 2023. So in the program, there's just some basic information regarding our comp, yeah. um, as well as a map of where the pieces are located. And then we just get into the pieces, the artists, the description. Yep. There's our panel of judges is in here as well. Okay. Uh, so people people come and there's a vending machine there. Yes, so they we'll go down and yeah, we'll have a peek at it. That. Okay, we have perfect. Our judge panel. Um, we have some advertisements and we have some fun vouchers in there. So you get a few deals here on the property. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Again, this. Kellogg Lane. This is the main uh, exhibition space. Um, there are pieces all over uh, 100 Kellogg Lane. So, you know, if you don't get, if, if you get one of the brochures, great. it show you where everything is at. There are uh, obviously paintings, sculptures, uh, uh, photographs, paintings in acrylic, oil, you know, fabric, installation. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's actually quite amazing. Um, there's some really striking things. There is some other things where at times you need to actually uh, take some look and read through what's happening. Uh, here, of course, is a fridge door, which I originally thought was about the whole idea of, you know, making the ordinary beautiful. But when I'm looking at it, I actually took some time to see what it's about. It's actually, it's a journey. It's a, it's a journey of a relationship. So something isn't beautiful because it lasts is the name of the piece. When you uh, look at look it through, it's obviously people coming together. You know, I love you, I want to travel, I want kids. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I want, I deserve more. And the fridge door in terms of the front piece, you know, ex explains all that in terms of the, the photos. So that becomes the whole piece of the whole idea behind a lot of the work is take your time and see. Take your time and try to understand with um, and appreciate what potentially the artist is trying to say. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to like it or agree with it, but sometimes it's a little bit different that on closer inspection is a little bit different than, than what you thought. Again, different art appreciation isn't necessarily about whether you like it or not. It's about kind of appreciating a the work that the artist put into it and b the message that they're trying to convey I, it's it's kind of it's okay it's cool and as we've talked about uh, we spoke with Emily about some of these um, pieces she mentioned the farthest one was away from South Africa here is there's a bit of a glare on it um, but here is a pencil and charcoal and it's actually called rapist which automatically makes us recoil in terms of what's going on. You know, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Um, it's, yeah, it's quite compelling. <laughs> and everything from that to something a bit funky as far as the beginning of distortion. Um, or, again, 
process pieces that are a little bit more abstract. Um, this is called Shades of My Youth. Uh, this is a figurative piece called Cheeky Dot. Obviously to some realistic paintings. Um, to uh, local artist, Jamie Jardine, <laughs> Purple and Yellow, which is about his artistic process, but it's got some pretty funky um, acrylic paint blobs on it. This is one of those pieces where you want to touch, but you shouldn't, it's not interactive, but it's just, again, you see it in the context and it's, it's quite, quite beautiful. And other pieces as well. So thanks for coming. Sorry about it. Yeah. Um, so welcome back. I'm back with Emily Barnes, Special Events Coordinator of Pier 100 Kellogg's. Um, you know, at the early part of the show, we were, this was a few weeks ago, we were actually touring upstairs, touring the art, and it yeah. was wonderful. But in September, you actually selected a few winners, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we did. So yeah. I think our last interview was end of August or middle of August. Something like that, yeah. yeah and we wrapped up the competition the first week of September. And so September 9th was, September Seven. 7th Seven. was the yeah. date of the event when the winners were announced. Yes. Um, there were three winners So chosen? there was two categories. Yeah. So there's okay. the People's Choice, and that's where the public can vote. So there was a first, second, and third from okay. that category. And then there was the panel's choice. So we had a panel of judges okay. score all the pieces based on a criteria, and there was one winner from that category. Okay, so let's talk about the People's Choice first. Yeah. So obviously people voted, yeah. um, and then kind of the number of votes that was basically yeah, the so, selection. Yeah, it was all through an online platform. Yeah. So the QR code was in our program. Also, the artists could share the QR code on their platforms yeah. and encourage family and friends to vote. And it, it's kind of beneficial because since it is an international competition, yeah. we had some pieces from California and from South Africa and their friends and family couldn't necessarily get here yeah. to vote for their piece. We do always encourage guests to come and see them in person just yeah. because it is so so different than just seeing them online or on yeah. a piece of paper for sure but you know yeah I know art when you see art in person it's completely different and it really blows you away versus on versus online yeah but we're gonna show the three uh, winners yes. in that kind of concept I, and I hesitate to even to call them winners the three the three pieces that were selected they were winners and of course yeah. there was a cash prize associated yes. with it yeah. but but the art was amazing like all, all around it. so it I became know. very very difficult to choose but the three winners we're going to put them on air as we talk about them so you can actually see them as yes. well yes yeah so for the people's choice category the third place winner was Stephen Gibb and he won twenty thousand dollars. Third place winner won twenty thousand yes. dollars. Okay, wow, Stephen Gibb. Yes, pretty amazing. Yes, and then second place was Lori Robertson. So she won thirty thousand dollars. That was the second place prize, and her piece looks like a photograph, but it is a drawing, which is insane. Wow, incredible. Okay, um, and then first place we had. Emily Patello, and she won $50,000. So Emily Patello won $50,000, and her piece was? It was an embroidered, like a circle, and it was just embroidered with, you know, different textures and so much detail, and, you know, so much work went into yeah. that, so. Perfect. Yes. And so were all those winners here, were, were all of those artists here that yes. night? Oh, so they yeah. were so excited. Did they know that they had won, or did you just tell them to come? So we tell the top 10 from each category, yep. and we have them sign an NDA that they can't tell anyone else yeah. that they know just because we want them to, to be, be there yeah and be surprised if, yes, as well if yeah. they like if they yeah. potentially win yeah um so we give out a little just a little something to all the um the top 20 finalists wow. okay. and then uh, they're all there and then it's you know really big dramatic we announce the names we have them in an envelope like you know it's kind of like the Grammys, like, okay, yeah, the, yeah. the Oscars and yeah, yeah, yeah so, so good. we do that and then yeah. we have you know confetti cannons and oh, awesome it's just super special and then that way the people that are in the top 10 like they can, you know, encourage their family to come, like, yeah. kind of hint, like, hey, like, this is the closing yeah. night for this, you know? And, and then in that context, you have 10 artists, there are 20 artists. Yeah. Um, only six are recognized officially with prizes. But so all only 20, four. So only four. Okay, yeah. so let's go back. Okay, so that's that's good. But those four are recognized, but all of the rest of them are recognized because they made the top 10 because you had thousands of submissions, didn't you? Yes, so, so we recognize all great. of the top 20, and then that's great. Um, we always try to incorporate the 100 finalists because okay. technically so out of all of the submissions that we get which you know last year was just under a thousand this year will hopefully be over a thousand 
we narrow that group down to 100 pieces that are wow. selected. So technically those are the finalists, the 100. Got it. Okay. So we always like to recognize and acknowledge them as well. So we kind of strung, we printed out all of the, the images of the, the art yeah. and then we kind of strung them throughout the room just, you know, so people could walk around and see all of the pieces in one place and just have one yep. final kind of look at them. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So then the grand prize winner, is it, do they call it the grand prize? So you, um, so you so have a panel, panel choice. So the panel chosen, there was a panelist choice for yes. the grand and prize winner. And that one winner. is a bit trickier because, you know, it's not, there's a criteria and you yep. have these, you know, professionals judging your piece based yep. off of this criteria. Yep. So the winner for that was Wilma Mel and she won okay. 100000 $100, dollars Wow. So Wilma Mel's piece, um, and you can see her right now. So wh what was the name of Wilma's piece? It was called Into the Blue. Into the Blue. Yes. And okay. it was just this gorgeous painting of this yeah. wave. Okay. And you can actually I do recall I do remember yeah. it, but we'll you'll see it you'll see it right now, which is like beautiful and amazing. And again, same kind of thing. You're seeing it um, on your television or online, but really it, to, to have seen it in person was amazing. So that piece now is, where is that piece? So we, the first place from each category, we keep. So it's here. So you, so, if you want to see them in person, yes. then you come down to 100 Kellogg's yes. basically. Yes. Okay, that's amazing. Um, so next year, so you've, you're going to do this again. Yeah, we, we are. So um, just this past Monday, yep. we announced the opening date for submissions for our comp 2024, yep. which will be January 8th. 2024. So mark it in your calendar it and it's, calendar. it's for anybody. So January 8th. And if people want to be reminded of the date, they can go Yeah, so just online. check our, our social media, our website. We'll have it all up there. And then on that date, all of the official rules, regulations, terms, timelines, all of that will be released on that date. I think the closing date for submissions is February 12th. Okay. So it gives you a few weeks there. Yep. Um, but for the most part, it's you know, all ages, international, all kinds of art. Yep. There are just some little rules and stipulations that will be released on that date. Okay. But just to get people's brains working. Yeah, for sure. And... But you do also have a newsletter. So for people like me who completely forget those dates yes. and don't write them down in the calendar, yes. if they go online, yeah, um, they can sign up for the newsletter, and that and that will come out as yes, well. Yes, okay. for sure. So it's uh, it's October right now. Uh, it is. You know, towards the end of October, when this airs, I believe it's the first week of November. And so 100 Kellogg's is now getting ready for We're in holiday mode, holiday mode. <laughs> and there's an art fair. that you So have a Merry Market. Mer Merry Market. Yeah. So okay. we have just artisan vendors. Some yep. are local, some are not local. Yep. And we have them throughout the building here. It does look a little bit different than how it has looked in okay. the past. Um, there's no admission fee this year yep. to enter as a guest. Okay. And vendors will be located all throughout the hallway here in the Emporium on the ground level. And then outside in our courtyard, we do a vendor village. So we have a bunch of wow. different little okay. sheds. Um, it's a very European vibe and wow. yeah, it's just magical. And then actually what we have behind us is something from previous Merry Markets. Yeah, so, so this is an installation piece. Yeah, so we do a wishing amazing. wall okay. during our markets and I think we're kind of known for that now. So yeah. uh, essentially we have pieces of fabric or this year it's more of a like a foil, like a holiday themed okay. fo uh, foil and guests can come and tie it onto these grids we have set up and make a wish and people love doing it with their friends and family and then uh, these are ones from the first Mary Markets that we have turned into these installations that are here in our building. Wow, actually they're, they're beautiful. They're they're here, they're when you walk through, they're all over, it's, it's actually a wonderful place to come. Yeah. So thank you, Emily, thanks of for, course. I mean, thanks for talking to us about all those things. So remember those dates. And all yeah, and if you need any so, more yeah. information regarding the Mary Market or Art Comp, it's all available at 100kelloglane.com or on our Instagram at 100kellog. Perfect, so 100kellog.com and then the big dates for the next Next art comp January is 8th. January 8th. Submissions too. open, and I believe it's February 12th that they close. Okay, that is perfect. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Okay. 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 We're done. Love it.